celebration, isn't it? A double celebration. Now, 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 listen to this, listen to this. Amen. It's not even a double celebration, it's a triple celebration. You know what? My spiritual father is in the house. So, you know, I know we've been planning this meeting for our time to come to the God City Assembly for our team. But one thing together, we didn't get the day to act. You know, as God we have it, you know, God is only Amen. He's the master planner. He plans things ahead of us. You know, and as God we have it, we thought he would not be in the UK. Amen. 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 But because God is a faithful God, and because God loves my wife and myself more than any, any, any other people, Amen. God makes sure that he is in the UK. Hallelujah. 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 He should have been in Kenya now. But God makes sure that he will not go to Kenya. Amen. He's going to be with our auntie. Amen. 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 I want to appreciate God for doing that. Amen. Amen. Probably my mother would have come a little by herself. And she would have been sitting and been looking like this man. Amen. 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 So I want to really, really, before I bring him to the front, I want us to stand up and just celebrate him on behalf of God. Amen. 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 Now, I'm going to do a proper introduction now. Before I bring it forward to come and give us the word. And I want to welcome everyone to God City Assembly Wolverhampton. God City Assembly Wolverhampton is part of, is a church arm of Flaming Sword Ministries UK. Now, uh, we have churches all over the world. I will come in the UK here over Ante, Kenya, Liberia, trusting of Ghana, Abuja, coming up soon, and in Nigeria. Amen. 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 And for every vision, God always has his servant, he has a vision here. Yeah. In this ministry, we don't use the word because of God's leading and God's instruction. We don't use the word geo or general Garcia or whatever thing you you call it. But there's something we use is called Vision Global Coordinator. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, to the glory of God, I have my father in the house, first of all, to have Matthew Daniel and his lovely, amazing. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't, you don't want to meet for me. I'm one to one. <laughs> Amen. Ashanti. <laughs> because she, she's British, so she's very gentle. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And it's lovely and amazing wife, Reverend Aaron Daniel. These are our spiritual parents. And anywhere I have the opportunity to say it and tell people that I'm not a pastor, I have a pedigree, I, 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 I have people that I am accountable to. Amen. Amen. And I have people that anytime you see me I'm dwelling, you can give a call and call them. That you, you are better talk to your son or talk to your children. As the case may be. Amen. Amen. So these are the people that ordained myself and my wife into ministry going to about 10 years, 10 years now. Hallelujah. Amen. And they have been overseeing us, teaching us, disciplining us, loving us, sacrificially, unconditionally. Hallelujah. Amen. They have been there for us, doing deep and deep time. They have been our support system after God. Hallelujah. They are parents indeed in the Lord. They are parents that we are so proud to be called their, their children. I know what I'm saying. There are fathers in the Lord, there are mothers in the Lord, there are also fathers and mothers in the Lord. So this morning, in God City Assembly, all over the world, we have a focus for every of our Sunday teaching and our Wednesday Bible study. And in this month, we are we actually studying about the kingdom of God, which is the kingdom message. That is our focus for this month. So, today happened to be Easter Sunday, happened to be my wife's birthday. Happened to be the very first Sunday 
he will be fellowshipping with us as our father since this particular branch has been inaugurated. Amen. Amen. And we have our global online viewers. They are on Facebook, they are watching me because there is life, they are, they are watching life now because they need to listen to the message. And that is the message they need to listen to on a normal Sunday if he's not here. Amen. Amen. So, with Jesus' joy in my heart, with gladness in my heart, the Bible says you should believe the word of the prophet. Amen. Even though he doesn't use a title, like we want him to be using it. Amen. Is a prophet of God, is an apostle of God in the body of Christ, is a teacher of the world and teacher by profession. Imagine. Amen. Amen. Teacher of the world, teacher by profession. Amen. Hallelujah. He's an evangelist and he's also a pastor. He occupies the fivefold ministry, he operates across the fivefold ministry. But he chose to use Reverend. Matthew. <laughs> Amen. 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 So, I just want to encourage us. Can we be on our feet as I put my father to be holding up this morning as a minister of what? Reverend Matthew A. Daddy. Let's start with Jesus. Can we give all the glory to God right now? Not give up on me. 
Does that, does that make sense, what I'm saying? To give you an idea, when I first became born again in the university, I went into the Christian fellowship, and a lot of people ran out of the prayer meeting. That was our reputation. And they're like, what is this one doing here? These are the satanic brothers. What are they doing here? But they didn't know that God's love can touch anybody. God's love can reach anybody. On Facebook two weeks ago, one of my old drinking buddies, yeah, I know, I know many people don't like to say they used to drink, where they're on the podium, I used to drink, okay? And I used to drink a lot. So one of my old drinking buddies, who is not a Christian, wrote a whole paragraph about me on Facebook two weeks ago, and said, if I ever become a Christian, these are the churches I will go to, and he put my name there alongside some of my other friends around the world who have become pastors. To me, that's the greatest testimony anybody can have. For an unbeliever to say that if I ever become a Christian, I will go to the church this guy is pastor because I know who he used to be and I know who he is now. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. What is the relevance of all these stories? You are going to get it as clearly as the Lord has given it to me. I don't mince words. I'm not here to impress you. I have nothing I want from you. So I'm just going to say it the way the Lord has asked me to say it. Is that okay? Yeah? Uh, hey, please, so relate with me now. Yes, sir. Amen. It's lonely here, very lonely. So please talk to me. Don't let me feel uh, uncomfortable. I'm going to talk from the heart to you. I had all these slides prepared. But I think in God's plan, it may not work today. We are talking about the kingdom. And because it's Easter Sunday, it's an amazing time for us to actually understand what the kingdom is all about. And the title of what I prepared, which I may not be using today, is Where is that kingdom? One of the things I've always done as a child of God, I've always asked questions. If anybody asks you not to ask questions, they're trying to brainwash you. How can God create me with intelligence and you are telling me not to ask questions? Of course I must ask questions. I'm Nigerian. Eh? I'm Nigerian. I must ask questions. I cannot just believe things because you said it is so. What does that mean? That's the way they used to preach to us when we were in the university. We are like, oh, why should we give our life to Christ? Because the Bible says so. So, give me another excuse. Give me another reason why I should follow Jesus. I used to flog all those people that used to come and preach. You know all those people that used to come and preach in I wish they, we used to flog them. Because many of them preached to us, but their lives did not reflect what they were preaching. Some, look, because some of us, we spent like 10 years in university because of all these people and all things and all things. So I went to university of Ibarra, university of Ife. So I spent like 10 years in university. When I was in Ife, on sabbatical, I mean, that's what we used to call it, sabbatical. I just left, I spent four years in UI, and I went to spend one year in Ife. And of course, we were the dangerous boys, you can't take home to your mother. And there was water scarcity on campus, 1986, I think. There was water scarcity on campus in Ife. I was in Fad, in Fad, you all that place. And we went everywhere and we did not find water to drink. But all these SU brothers, they have full buckets under their, under, their, under their tongues. The SU brothers that used to come and preach to me, give your life to Jesus. I said, no, my life is my own, I'm holding on to it. So, and I went to the one that was not very wild. You know, they had all sorts of categories. The one that was not very wild, the soft looking one there. I said, I'm going to do it. Can I have a cup of water? Somebody that has been preaching to me for almost a year for me to give my life to Jesus. I asked him for a cup of water and he would not give me a cup of water. From a bucket of water. I'm not asking for a cup of water from a small drop of water. So maybe it might not be enough for him. From a full bucket of water, I asked for a cup of water. And this brother will not give it to me. 
And I stood at the door and I looked at him and I said, and yet you have been preaching Jesus to me all this time. Have you just represented that Jesus now? Mm. And the guy looked at me and I said, yeah. Some of us who have gone in Christian home when we just ran away. I can out teach you on the Bible. I'm just not ready to follow Jesus yet. And the guy was looking at me like, wow, crazy man. What's the relevance of all these stories? Many Christians today do not know Christ. I repeat again, in case my accent, you missed it because of my Ekiti accent. Many Christians today do not know Christ. And so they are giving us a bad name. Because they can't give Christ a bad name. They are giving the rest of us Christians a bad name. COVID came and Christians fell down like a like pack of cards. One microorganism. One. Do you know that as I'm talking to you, many churches are shut down because of COVID. Many of, many of them are my friends. I'm not here to laugh at them, you understand? I'm not here to make fun of them. I'm giving you facts. Many of these churches shut down. They are not opened up till now because COVID came. Why was that even possible? Because what we were doing before was not church. We were just arranging people in a building, preaching to them to death, boring them to death. And so when COVID came and people sat at home, they're like, my life is not different though. Mm -hmm. So when COVID was lifted and they said, come to church, they're like, to come and do what? Mm -hmm. I hate people lying to me because we were the ones that used to lie to me. So my mom is a of me, man. I'm a part of me. I'm a part of me. Don't come and tell me any yeah, yeah, lies. Now we did lie before. Now that I'm in Christ, you can't lie to me. He said that Christ exists or he doesn't exist. He said that it works or it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, let's go home and find alternatives. If it works, let it work in my life. Let it work in my situation. Let it work in, in, in everything I, I lay my hands on. That is what I'm standing upon. Amen? Amen. So they came to Jesus. The disciples and asked him, Where is this kingdom? You are talking about this your kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. This your kingdom, where is it? And he said, It does not come by observation only. Do you know that when you gave your life to Christ, when you are they ask you to say those short, short prayers, me, I said it like, I don't know, 10 or 15 times. I gave my life like 10 or 15 times. I gave it and I took it back. <laughs> Then I will go, and then when I eat a stone, I will go come back and give it to him again. Then I will take it back. Then I will go. What I'm saying to you, I'm not a Christian because somebody lied to me. I'm a Christian because Jesus became real to me. And it's on this conviction I stand. It's on this conviction I will die. So the kingdom they've been talking about could not face COVID. COVID. See church shaking anyhow. Mm. See men of God saying rubbish from both sides of their mouths. Mm. Ah. Mm. I'm surprised mm -hmm. I shock sir. Mm. All the people when they pack, sorry I'm speaking broken. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yeah? Is it alright? Yeah? We're in England. Can I speak broken English? Is that okay? <coughs> Mommy said, Mommy said no. British people, please excuse me, just give me a second, right? Let me express myself. People that used to pack arenas, mm -hmm. healing service, see them dodging during COVID. Mm -hmm. I was shocked. Nobody came out and said, Okay, you are not asking us to come out, but if anybody is here is sick, bring them to our. Mm -hmm. And our God will. It was a shocker to my system because it became very clear to me that people do not know about the kingdom of God. In John chapter 3, verse 3, let me just say so you know that I read the Bible, I'm not just speaking my own opinion. 
He said, unless you are born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said to Jesus, how can a man be born again? Now, I'm already an old man. And he said, no. Nicodemus did not understand. But the church that preached that to us, they stopped there. So many of you are probably born again. Congratulations. Let me tell you what that means very quickly. It means that if you die today, most likely you will be with, you know, you will make it with, with Jesus. Is that okay, yeah? Only that we have like 88 years to live. What will happen before I die now? You tell me I'm going to heaven. Thank you. I'm glad I'm going to heaven. What will happen for the 96 years I have to live on earth? That's the question many of the churches have not fully answered. And I hope that through the course of this short sermon, you will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, can somebody read for me John chapter 3, verse 5? I mean, teacher, all of us, this is a classroom, all of us are involved. John chapter 3, verse 5. Jesus answered, Yes. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Yes. Thank you very much. What many people do not know is that when you became born again, that was the beginning of your journey. Many people came, became born again and they, they just became stuck after that. I was growing up in a household where my sister gave her life in 1972. She was one of the first set of SU in Nigeria, uh, Christian Union in Nigeria. And Satan was slapping her for many years, and I'm standing there, we were the rebel, we were the devils in the house. But this is the body again in the house. Devil was slapping her, and I'm like, I don't understand this. This woman will wake up for a year to pray. Midnight, we are hearing rap, 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 so those are the things that made it difficult for me to give my life on time. Because I saw those who gave their life back. Their life was not any better. Mm -hmm. And I'm a practical person. If what you're offering me is not better than what I have, I'm not dying. Mm -hmm. If what you're offering me is not better than what I'm holding on to, I'm not dying. If you like, talk from morning till night. I will listen to you, I will be nice to you, and I will say no. So why are many Christians finding it difficult to evangelize in the United Kingdom? Are white people not created by God? Why is it that we go in Nigeria and we go on the bus and preach and four people will give their life? We go to market and preach, 18 people will give their life. We go to public place and preach. Why is that not happening here? Oh, it's very easy. Uh, easy, easy peasy, lemon squeezing. Because in Africa, we are, we, are, we are hungry. Not hungry for the word of God, but hungry as in we are starving. So when somebody comes to tell us that something will help our hunger, we listen quickly. But how do you preach to somebody who is not starving? How do you preach to somebody who does not like the things you are offering? You've heard the story of a night vigil in London. And then a man of God was brought from Nigeria to come and preach. And he kept saying, I want you to stand up and pray for your Pajero. Pray for your Pajero. The white woman in the audience said, what is a Pajero? They said Pajero is a 4x4 drive. They said, I don't need a 4x4. <laughs> we came and we were offering the gospel of bread and butter. And when we met people that were eating jollof rice, our gospel died in the presence of people eating jollof rice. But the gospel we brought was the gospel of bread and butter. Just give your life, na na na. Your situation will change. You can even land up Muslims in Nigeria. They will give their life, na 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 na. I've done it before. Because hunger, starvation, makes you decide on many things. But what do you say to people who don't have any physical needs or any apparent needs? What do you say to them? We are all meant to be operating in power. Everybody say power.
power. Ah. We're just sitting down there teaching ourselves, lecturing ourselves. Oh, more, go and display power. See if people won't follow you. The kingdom of God came with Jesus. What does that mean? It means that the influence of God in heaven starts to operate in our lives. Amen. So where is the evidence now? If what you are offering is not better than what I'm holding on to, I'm not buying. It's time for us to start preaching the gospel of bread and butter. And it's time for us to activate every child of God so that we can become a battle axe in the hand of God. If somebody has headache, black, white, or Asian, if I say, please, do you mind if I pray for you? And he says, no. Oh, that's okay, you can pray for me. And I pray for the person and he's healed. Do I need to be speaking English again? No. Do I need to be quoting 15 million scriptures again? No. If we are on the same walk, and we are doing the same thing, but I'm doing better than you, but you can't explain what I'm doing. And you ask me that, ah, gentleman, you seem to be doing this thing really well. And I said, it is God. Won't you listen to me? My wife is here. You guys know her very well. She's a straight as an arrow, British as they come. When I walked in Cambridge, you remember that man? He came and knocked on my hotel room. I, was, I used to work in the pharmaceuticals in the UK. You know, the Pfizer's, the Glaxo's, all of those. And so I was working for one of those, I was in Cambridge at the time. And this white man knocked on my hotel room and said, my colleague at work, I want what you have. Mm. I, I, no cross on my neck, no Bible anywhere. Mm. No Moses, Exodus, Genesis, nothing. I want what you have. I said, Stanley. I've got Jesus. That's all I have. He said, how do I get this Jesus? He, thought, he wasn't happening to me every day. Don't let me come and stand there and be like those people lying on the podium. But since then, he hasn't happened to go. But why is that not happening every day? Because we were given the kingdom, but we did not enter into the kingdom. That is why it is said in John chapter 3, verse 5, that it is by the washing of the water, which is the word of God, and by the Holy Spirit taking over your entire being to the point that heaven is able to come and, 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 and come through all of your essence and then starts to operate here on earth. What was the testimony for the disciples? They know they were unlearned men, but they know that they are being with whom? Jesus. Jesus. They have been with Jesus. They say these people are illiterate too. Mm. But look at the way they are operating. They have been with Jesus. Jesus. When you listen to Christians talk in the workplace, I was telling, I don't know whether it was uh, Pastor B I was talking to, I was teaching in a school in High Wycombe for almost, I don't know, 18 months. There were seven Christians there, we did not know each other. Mm -hmm. So it was when one person found out I was a pastor, now told the others, Matthew is a pastor. So the other came out, oh yeah, I'm a Christian too. I'm. 18 months we are talking, drinking tea in the staff room, we didn't know we were Christians. Oh no, if God, if God exists, let it exist in your situation. Amen. Amen. If it doesn't, go and find something else to do. Come on, let's stop wasting our time now. The kingdom came with power. Apostle Paul said it is not in the excellency of speech. It is, it is in the demonstration of power. God has sent me on some crazy messages in my lifetime. I tell a stranger, God said I should tell you this. He? So what I was thinking in my bedroom, only God will have shown you that. I don't need to be quoting 15 million scriptures after that. 
the kingdom has to be practical and it has to start with you and I. The way you are in secret will show when you stand in public. The way you are in secret will show when you stand in public. If you have not been reading the Bible in secret, and you, can, you now come up before people trying to show that you've read the Bible, you will just show yourself up. If you have not been praying in secret, and you now come to the president and say, oh, let me pray for you, no more, nothing will happen. Because you've not been doing it in, in the secret place. So when you study the scripture, study the scripture to find out power. How do I access this power? How do I make use of this power? And then people will keep quiet around you forever. We can only silence our detractors by the demonstration of God's power. Every other thing, we're just wasting our time. We're just wasting our time. The kingdom is in inside of every born again child of God. So that means that a born again child of God that is going to steal money is stealing money with God inside of them. Did somebody hear what I just said? Yes, sir. A born again child of God that is going to sleep with another person that's not their spouse is doing that with God inside of them. Or more, if that irritates you, that is that was what I intended to do. So everywhere we go, we must be accountable that we are under a government that is higher than us. Whether people are watching or not. We are among all sorts of Christians. I've met all sorts of Christians since. Oh yeah, yeah. Since I became born again, all sorts. Many just carry the tag, Christian, born again, uh, cross, this, uh, Bible is big, brother. Do you know Jesus? Does Jesus know you? Do you have a relationship with him? Is he alive inside of you? Guys, let's stop making a mockery of Christianity. I said immediately they lifted the, the COVID ban. One of them went to arrange a miracle service. I said, look, look at them. God won't allow me to go and know this person. Stop, stop making a mockery of us. Guys, if your life is not the way it should be, you have the right to ask God why. And listen to the answer. Because some people will just ask God, they will complain to God 16 hours. And then they'll stand up and go. They won't even wait for the answer. If you talk to God, you must receive a solution from God. Matthew 6 33. Somebody else, apart from the person who read the last one, so all of us can be awake. Matthew 6 33. That's fine. God bless you. That shows that we are alive. I'm okay with that, though. It shows we are alive. But seek first. Yes. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Thank you very much. But seek first the kingdom of God and his. Some people always call it its righteousness. No, his. His. It's a person. Jesus. Guys, we must first. Make sure you have equipped yourself at all before you go and enter unnecessary battles. Do you know that a pastor called me and said that a witch uh, said we're going to put a curse on him that should play with him? A pastor. Mm -hmm. What are we doing now? You have the superior weapon. The person with the inferior weapon threatens you, you are shaking in, in your legs. Have you not read in the scripture that says that Jesus is seated where? And above all principalities and powers. Mm. There was small power starting to, to shake your leg right now. You can't sleep again. Oh, I had a dream. One witch came to slap me during the dream. Slap the witch back inside the dream. Because many of us are not equipped. Mm. We're not prepared. Mm -hmm. We're not fully harmed for the battle that we are fighting. So Satan is just having easy wins, easy wins. 
easy way. It's like giving a child an MX-18. For those who don't know, an MX-18 is a multi-round, massive gun that can shoot multiple rounds. And you load that gun and you give it to a child. And somebody comes with a stick. Or um, the stick person is winning on. But the child doesn't know how to use what you've given to them. That's the way most Christians are. The kingdom comes with power, but that power must flow through each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. You know, they talk about the Ark of the Covenant. How many of you have heard of the Ark of the Covenant before? You remember in the Old Testament, the Ark? Do you know that some people have spent millions, over 300 million, looking for the Ark since that time? They believe it's actually somewhere in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Most likely it might be. But it's relevant. Because that, that is the old Ark. Do you know what the new ark is? You and I! We are the ark of the new covenant. That means that we carry God inside of us. That means everywhere we go, we people must feel our presence. One man sits on a chair. Everybody, he gets up. Everybody is trying to sit on the same chair. Oh, more, you, know, you don't know who you are now. Is it not God that is doing whatever is doing through him? Mm -hmm. Is that God not inside of you too? Mm -hmm. oh, if what you they offer, not better pass me and get. I know they buy. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know that God is real. Yes. God is able. Yes. God is willing. Yes. And God is not dead. Mm -hmm. So if, it's, if all these things are true, why do we keep looking as if we have no help from anywhere? Can I give you two minutes? Please stand up, talk to God. Not me, oh. Whatever is bothering you, talk to Him right now. Where well, yeah, stand up, oh. Pray. With your own mouth, oh. I don't know your name. I will pray for myself. Pray for yourself. Whatever is bothering you, ask God for help now. He's available here. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for how far you have brought us. I thank you for the fact that you've been trying to tell me from yesterday I will not be able to preach from the 14 slides that I prepared. Because you wanted me to talk from my heart to your people. My Lord and my God, I pray right now that your power that is present here will start to move in the lives of everybody here. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Lord and our God, anyone that has any sickness or any illness of any kind, we declare them healed. In the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Father Lord, I pray for those who are facing oppression mm. by the enemy. Those who are being oppressed mm. by the enemy. Mm. I set them loose right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Many as walk through this door today, they will not walk out with their problems in the name Amen. of Jesus. It shall be a new day for each and every one of us. My Lord and my God, the kingdom has been with us since we didn't even know. Because we cannot see it with our ordinary eyes, we keep struggling, thinking solution is everywhere else. But solution has always been inside of us. Father, Lord, let people come alive to you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. And activate your children, whatever they may be, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Can you place your hand on your heart or your chest or wherever and ask the Lord to anoint you afresh with the Holy Spirit? Pray sincerely. Pray with all of your heart. Fresh with all of your heart, anoint me afresh with the Holy Spirit. Is there any anointing?
wanted you, but you're asking for a fresh anointing. Jesus, Holy Spirit, you cannot operate in power. You can't do anything. in this church in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. If you're in business, please step out. Let me just agree with you. Simply we do it and we're done with Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Where's the woman that sang? Okay. I have a word for her. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, you are the one who anointed me for business 32 years ago. And everything I've laid my hands on has prospered. Father, Lord, I transfer this to your children standing here today. Everything they lay their hands on shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, remove every hindrance from what it is they do in the name of Jesus. Fill them with fresh insight Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Forgive their disobedience in the past. Because you are telling me some of them, you told them what to do, but they haven't done it. Father, Lord, forgive their disobedience in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord, let there be a tangible sign for them Amen. that you have had their prayers. Amen. In Jesus' name, I pray. I'm just going to touch just as a symbol. It is God that does it in the name of Jesus. 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 Name of Jesus. Now listen. Sorry, I'll speak your about. Forgive me and I will interpret it. If God tells you to do something, do it. Do it the way he has said it. So you don't come and come up with excuses as why it's not working. If he asks you to sell water, go and start selling water. Don't stand there asking one million questions. Uh, what type of water? What such will I put it in? Uh, do I brand it? Should I unbrand it? That is, those are signs of disobedience. Because you are being reluctant in obeying. As you go, it will be clear to you what to do. But if he tells you sell water, Start going to look for water. As you go, he will tell you, okay, turn right, turn left, do this, do that. The reason many people never prosper is disobedience. Because they think God cannot prosper them with anything. I was telling Pastor Demola this, and I don't know if uh, Pastor uh, Bola has heard of this before. I was working with an agency for teaching. Three schools were bidding for my services. In the United Kingdom, have you heard of that before? As in, oh, we will pay more. We will pay more. Let him come to our school. We will pay more. We will pay more. There's nothing God cannot use to prosper you. There's nothing he can't use to prosper you. He's the one that created all sources of it. As you go, you will receive instruction. Please Amen. stick to it in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is where we too. God bless you. You may go back to your soul. Praise God, somebody! I have a word for you. I have a word for you. Bring your hand, just touch mine. In the name that is above every other name. From this day forward, everything you touch shall prosper. Amen. There shall be a turnaround in your business that will shock you. Amen. I saw this as you were singing, and I'm only just a servant of God, delivering God's message to you. Go and prosper in the name of Jesus. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Praise God, somebody! Amen. I'm going to round up now so that Pastor D sorry, can come. And that is, the kingdom is inside of you and I. It's not. Do you know that this is not church? Can I shock you? What we call
call church is not church. We are churches meeting in a building. Did somebody hear me? Are you listening? Yes, sir. You are a church meeting in a yeah. building. Because anywhere God is, that is in his house. And if God is inside of you, so we are churches meeting corporately in a building. Amen. Amen. I think I'll stop here for now. But before I do that, can I quickly have the flower there? I want to present it to my daughter and pray for her. Somebody help me get this flower next to one of Pastor David. Glory to God. Thank you. God bless you. Listen, the reason why you've always found favor with me is because of what you carry. You don't even see yourself. And sometimes it, 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 it confounds me. And pray that from this day, this black day, the Lord will open your eyes for you to see yourself. Amen. And I pray that what you carry, you will use it to bless more people in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are a prophet of God. You need to earn it. Earn it means to punish it. Anything God gives us, we are meant to make it better by keeping it, by cherishing it. Work on it. Spend time with the Holy Spirit so it gets bigger and gets better. You are a prophet of God. Don't, I don't engage in just ordinary talk with anybody. Make sure that when you open your mouth, you are speaking what God has shown you. Amen. If you don't have anything God has shown you, just keep quiet. Don't even judge, don't follow opinions. Don't follow gossip. Don't follow some, somebody saying something about me. No! Just keep quiet. Let the Holy Spirit be walking out. By the time you open your mouth, then everyone will have spoken. That is the secret. In the name that is above every other name, I bless you on your birthday. It's going to be a milestone for your life. Amen. The Holy Spirit will come upon you in a fresh way. Amen. And your life will be a different one in the name of Amen. God. I pray that many shall be blessed through you. Amen. In the name that is above every other name. Amen. I say that nations shall be birthed within you. Amen. And I say people will see the light of God through you. Amen. Amen. Let me say pray for her because I know you are always talking about her. My Father, my Lord, my God, this Lord. Thank you for this precious gem, this precious jewel. Amen. My Lord, I thank you for the word you gave for me. There are many flowers he has of people. So is she inside and out. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. As the smell they give its frame, so shall it be for your life unto the Lord for the Almighty. Amen. As they give pleasure just by their just being.
is in you. The question is, are you in the kingdom? When um, I remember reading a news article, it was a sad one, unfortunately. There was a lady who had come from Nigeria. She was working here. She was a nurse, fully trained, everything. But she had taken a child and taken the old ways, the old culture of, of um, feeding children, force feeding. I remember when I was very young, like, when, I, when I went to Nigeria, I saw it first. I was in shock. I was traumatized for days because I thought that child was you know, suffering. But this lady, who is in the medical profession, did the same practice in the UK. Unfortunately, she's in jail. Why? Because she brought him from the old place into the new. That's what happens when people are in the kingdom, but the kingdom is not in them. Hallelujah. Why do I say that? Because right now, it's blessing time, which means it's offering time. Amen. Hallelujah. The practice in this kingdom is to give. I heard, this was an even unbeliever program, I was flying by, I heard it. And the man said, oh, you come to see a king? Did you come without bringing something? And it's unwise. In this new kingdom, we bring up things to our king from our hearts. It's not about the money, it's not about the amount you give. That said, everything we have comes from him. But in the heart offering, it is the attitude that God receives. And as today, I ask you to prepare your offering unto our Lord God Almighty, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Um, we have various ways of giving. You can give me an envelope. And whoever wants to give online, if you see the notice boards on either side of the room with the black and yellow notices, we have the GCA Wolverhampton uh, cash plans bank, and the um, number is 087199. That's that last lower number, unfortunately. Then it's sub Oh, is that the old number? Okay, yeah, the stop code and the account number. So the stop code is uh, 0871 yeah, and yeah, the yeah, account number 05 05 20 20 Hallelujah. Please prepare your offering unto the Lord. And see yourself in the kingdom, coming before the king. Your approach should be that one of joy, dancing. You know, if they took you today to a Cabeus's palace, there was an attitude and an approach you would take. How much more our Lord and our God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We magnify you. We exalt you. We give you glory, honor, and praise, adoration. Hallelujah. You are the Alpha and the Omega. The one who knows the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. The one who hides himself in light. Thank you, Father Lord, because you are the one that hides things. That is your glory, and it is the glory of things to seek it out. We worship you, we magnify you. Endless one, ancient of days, highest of the high, mightiest of the mighty, all wise and ever loving Father. Hallelujah, we worship you. We bring you these tokens of our love and our affection to you. We also love uh, receive your blessing because we take this as a seed sown to you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you. We magnify you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. 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 I want to appreciate God for, for today, like I said to us earlier on, that it's more than like a triple celebration today. Today is Easter Sunday. Can the children read this noise, please? We're closing now. We're closing now. 
is a triple celebration. We're celebrating Easter today, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we also celebrate the gift of life. Today happened to be my wife's birthday. And also today happened to be the day my spiritual parent had to visit us in Wolverhampton since this local assembly has started. Amen. We want to appreciate God. Amen. We also want to thank all those who have come from far, from Northampton, from, from London. We want to appreciate you that this is God's city assembly. Wolverhampton. We love you from time to time. Just come and visit us. Amen. You pray your life will never remain the same in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our usual service starts from 10 30 and we normally finish by 12 o'clock. Uh, but because it's a special Sunday today, so we are extending our apologies for that. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let's bring our feet this afternoon as we bring this service to our name. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is not in war. Or is a demonstration of power. I want to believe that something has happened in you today. And the Lord wants that thing to be evident outside as you go into the world this way. Just one prayer point before we go. I want you to pray and say after the Father, in the name of Jesus, let your kingdom be made. Let your kingdom be begin to manifest. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray prayer as you go. In your family, in your household, in your workplace, in your community, in your neighborhood. Let the kingdom of God be your kingdom, your government, your rule, your influence, your way in me. Let it begin to manifest in so in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for today. To bless your name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I'm just going to invite the Father to close the service. Then we'll come back and we'll do our confession because. We are the confession of this local assembly we do every Sunday. Father Lord, we are grateful to you for what you have done in our midst. And according to your word, it is permanent. Nobody can take it away, nobody can reduce it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father Lord, I pray for this assembly and thank you for your son, Pastor Devonan, your daughter, Pastor Oki, who are you who are giving the oversight over this house here. Continue to strengthen them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Continue to surround them with favor in the name of Amen. Jesus. Father Lord, let's continue to hear testimonies from this book. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord of God. And let's be fresh with the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely. It's goodness and potential followers. All this is for our lives.